Let's go to page 932 and start with number 1. It says, when the slope of the tangent line, okay, so you have f of x is equal to 3x plus 4, and it's tangent at 1, 7, and you're looking for the slope. So you can just go and sketch out something so you can visualize. So it's your point 1, so it's 1, 7. Here's your second point, okay? And the second point, you have to use your function. So when it's when the so when it's x, so this is y. So you can f of x is y. So when so this point would be x and the y would be 3x plus 4. Okay, so you can let your x, let your y from here. And the slope would be equals to the limit so the limit of the of the um, f of x plus h minus f of x and over here would be um, and over here would be just the h so that's one form but the, the other form would be just based on the slope, right? Just use the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. So another way to write this, this is equal to the y2, that's your 3x plus 4, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you want to take the limit as this point approach to this point. So that means x approaches to 1. Okay, again, so x is going to get close and close to 1. Okay. So instead of using this form, you want to use this form. Okay. This form is a little bit easier to do. So the slope equal to... So you go and simplify this, you get 3x this is a plus. So 3x minus uh, 3 over x minus 1. So factor out the 3. And over here you can cancel these things out. And then you can apply the name. So add, so Now since there's no x, so there's nothing to substitute, so the slope will equal to 3. Okay, okay let's go to number 3. You have f of x equal to 4x squared minus 3x at negative 1, 7, and you're looking for the slope at that point. So you can sketch something, sketch a picture to help you to visualize. So this is negative one seven. This point you don't know, so it'd be x and the y. Okay, so when you put x in here, the, again, this is your y. Okay, realize that the function is the y. So you're gonna, so y is four x squared minus three x. Okay, so you can let your x and the y. So now, so your slope equal to the limit. So it'd be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right? So again, that's a slope formula. y2 minus y1. This is from this. Okay. And the limit would be over here. It's going to be x. So you, to to find the limit, you have to bring this point close to that. So it'd be x approach to negative one. Okay. So now we're going to simplify. So you have four x squared minus three x minus seven over x plus one. And from here, you need to go and do factoring. So do your master product. So you got negative 3, negative 28, 
So one comma negative twenty eight, two comma negative fourteen, uh, four comma negative seven, and this is the one. So when you're doing the factoring, see x and four x. So this will be the inside. So be plus one. Also, this will give you the clue, okay? And this will be the outside, so it'd be minus seven. And if you notice that this will cancel out. And then from here, you can go and um, apply, you can go and substitute. Once this, is, once this is canceled out, then you can substitute. Over here, you cannot substitute because when you substitute negative, when you get zero on the bottom, so you cannot do that. So this would be equal to 4 times negative 1 minus 7. So slope will equal to negative 11. Okay, let's go to number 5. Okay, number 5, you have f of x equal to 2x cubed at 2 comma 16 again you're looking for the slope at that point and realize again the function of x means y that means the same thing so if you write this will help you to kind of visualize your second point so point 1 point 2 so point 1 that's a point you're looking for so that's 2 16 over here the point would be x and the y and it tells you y over here y is 2x cubed and again, you want to get the second point. So here's your tangent line right over here. So you, and since there's only one point, so you need to bring this point to that. So slope equal to the limit of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the limit would be x approach to 2. Okay, so again, point 2 approach to point 1. And then from here, go ahead and do the factoring. So go ahead and factor out the two. Okay, and then go ahead and do the factoring. So you get x minus two. So you need to know how to factor the cube. So it'd be x squared plus two x plus four. Okay, and then you go and cancel these things out. As soon as you cancel out, you can substitute your 2 in here. So, and you have to keep the name it until you substitute. Okay, as soon as you substitute, you can drop the name it. So this way you go to 2 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4. So slope equal to 2 times 4 plus 4 plus 4. So slope equal to 12 times 2 give you 24. Okay, let's go to number seven. Okay, so this one, you, you need to find the equation of the tangent line. So you have y equal to uh, x plus x squared at negative one, zero. Okay, so this one, you have to do more steps. Okay, you, but you go through the same step, first you need to find the slope. Okay, here's your point one, point two, and you're looking for the equation of this line. Now the, the problem asks you to graph the curve and the tangent line. Um, so those are fairly easy, you can do that on your own. I'm not going to do that in, in the solution, so you have to do that on your own. So you got negative one, zero. And this point is going to be x and the y, and y is x plus x squared. So again, first you need to find the slope. So slope equal to the name it as this approach to this. Okay, so it be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, I forgot to name it. And the name it would be the x2 approach to x1. So it would be x approach to negative 1. 
okay? And again, as of right now, you cannot substitute negative one in here because you will get zero, okay? So go ahead, so this minus zero will be just that. So go ahead and find out the x. And over here, get x plus one. Now, if you notice, 1 plus x and x plus 1 are the same, so you can cancel it out. So once you cancel, you can substitute. So slope, when you substitute, then it would be negative 1. Okay. So once you find that slope equal to negative 1, so this slope over here equal to negative 1. So now you have to use the, the point slope form. Okay, so you have to use the point slope form. So you're going to get y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So you're going to get y minus 0 equal to negative 1 times x minus negative 1. Right? So again, that's your, that's your x1, y1. Work it out, so you got y equal to negative x. I distribute and this one times the notice you got negative 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 three negative will give you one negative okay, and that's the your equation for the tension line okay let's go to number nine so all these are same type of problems so you got y equal to x over x minus one at two two Again, you're looking for equation of the tangent line. So just sketch out your curve too, so you can visualize. So point one is a two, two. And you're looking for equation of the tangent line. And over here, you're gonna get x, and, and the y would be x over x minus one. Again, the slope is equal to uh, I forgot to name it. The reason you have to use name it because it is a curve, okay, and you have to approach to the point one. That's why you need to use the name it. If it, if it, if it's a straight line, then you don't need to name it. Okay, so you're going to get y two minus y one over x two minus x one, and you're going to have the x2 approach to x1, so you're going to get x approach to 2, okay? So from here, you have complex fractions, so you want to multiply everything by the common den denominator, so x minus 1. So you want to multiply everything by... x minus 1. So I'm going to write it again, so you can see it better. So multiply by x minus 1 x minus 1 and x minus 1 so this will cancel out so go and distribute so you got x now you have to use negative 2 times that would be minus 2x negative 2 times minus 1 will give you plus 2 and on the bottom do not multiply the bottom you need to keep it so that you can cancel things out And so this will give you negative x plus 2. And you need to go and find out the negative 1. So you get x minus 2. And then from here, the x minus 2 will cancel up. So now, once you cancel it, now you can substitute. Because before, if you substitute 2 in here, you get 0, so you cannot, right? But once you, can, once you cancel, you can substitute. And again, once you substitute, you can drop the limit. So you got negative 1 over 2 minus 1. So slope will equal to uh, negative 1. And once you find the slope, you come back over here. You can use the point slope form. So you got y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So you got y minus 2 
equal to negative 1 times x minus 2 so you got y minus 2 equal to negative x and again you multiply you get plus 2 and put in the slope intercept form so you got y equal to negative x plus 4 Okay, so again, you have to apply the limits, use the limits to find your slope, and then from there, you can have just regular algebra. And okay, let's go to number 11. Okay, you got y equal to square root of x plus 3 at 1 comma 2. And again, you're looking for a tangent line. So here's your point 1, point 2 and you're looking for that equation of that tangent line. So this point is at 1 comma 2. So this point would be x, and the y would be square root of x plus 3. Okay, so again, first you have to find the slope. So slope equal to the limit of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and the limit would be the the x2 approach to x1 so it'd be x approach to 1 okay, again it's always this approach to that okay so I'm going to write it one more time so it's more clear okay so I need to multiply by conjugate when I have a square root I need to multiply by conjugate And on the bottom, do not multiply out. Okay, leave it in the parentheses. Okay, so when you multiply the conjugate, you just the, the O and the I will cancel out, so it'll be so it's just F and L. So you're gonna get x plus three minus four, and this would be over x minus one, square root of x plus three plus two. And this will give you x minus 1. And if you notice, if you do it correctly, it always will cancel out so that you were able to substitute. So you can notice this will cancel out and you get 1. So now you can go and substitute. So you have to keep the limit until you substitute. So once you substitute, you can drop the limit. Okay, so m equal to 1 over... Uh, so this will give you 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, so slope is equal to 1 over 4. So you can put it right over here. So now you have a point. You have a slope. Now you can go and figure out your equation. So you got y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So you get y minus 2 equal to 1 fourth times x minus 1. Right, again, that's your x1, y1. So go and work it out. So plus 2, plus 2. So y equal to 1 fourth x. Uh, plus 7 over 4. Okay, let's go to number 13. Okay, so you're looking for the deriv derivative of the function. So f of x equal to 1 minus 3x squared at 2 and you're looking for f prime of 2 and okay, you're looking for derivative at that point so again all the point is exactly the same thing okay f of prime means slope okay so that's what it means you can sketch it out and you can notice every point I sketch up the same picture it's just so that you can able to visualize so at point 1 is a 2 something okay over here it's going to be x and 1 minus, again, this is your y. So it'll be 1 minus 3x squared. 
Now to find the the, the to find the, the uh, y one, you need to substitute this into here. Okay, so y one will equal to so to find y one, you substitute the x one, so it'd be one minus three times two square. So y one will equal to one minus three times four. So y one will equal to negative eleven. Okay. So that's how I get I can just substitute into equation to get that point. So you can so you got, you got more steps. Okay. And again, you're looking for derivative means you're looking for the slope. So every point is the same thing. You just have to understand what it's asking for. Okay, so f prime of two is same as the slope will equal to the y2 minus the y1 over x2 minus x1 and the limit would be x approach to 2 right? because you start at x and you're going to approach to 2 okay so now you're going to simplify so f prime of 2 so be careful don't forget your limit it's very easy to forget the limit So go and simplify this. So you got one minus three x squared plus eleven over x minus two. Uh, so I get negative three x squared plus twelve x minus two. So I need to find out the negative three. So factor out the negative 3, and this will become minus 4. And do more factoring. So you get x plus 2, x minus 2. And you get x minus 2. So you can notice, if you do it correctly, it will always cancel out. Something will always cancel out. If nothing cancels out, then you need to double check your, your math. Okay. So once it cancels out, now you can substitute, right? Because before, if you substitute 2, it give you 0. So now you cancel out, now you're all good. So you can go and cancel. Uh, what you can substitute after you cancel. So it would be negative 3 times 2 plus 2. So f prime of 2 will equal to uh, negative 12. Okay. And that's it. That's all I ask you to do. Right? Again, you ask for slope or the derivative. So derivative means slope, same same thing. Okay, let's go to number fifteen. Okay, number fifteen, you have g of x equal to x to the four at one, and you're looking for the derivative. So you're looking for g pr um, g prime of of at one. Okay. So you're looking for g of x, g prime of x at 1. Right? That's why it's asking. So you can sketch it out. It helps you to visualize. This is like your switch. This is like your trigger. It helps you to visualize, to see things, to, to figure out things. Okay. So this is 1. Now, you don't know the y, so just leave it blank for now. Over here, you're going to get x. And again, function means y. Okay. So if you write this way, it helps you to, you know, to kind of click. Okay, so it'd be x to the 4. Now to find the y2, uh, y1, you just put x1 into here. Okay? So y1 will equal to 1 to the 4th power. Right? That's the function. So y1 equal to 1. Okay? So again, when x equal to 1, 1 to the 4th power is still 1. So that's your, that's your y1. So once you get this point, now you can go and use your, uh, you can use your uh, definition of limits. So you can don't forget your name it. So it'd be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and the name it would be x approaches to 1. Okay. So x approaches to 1. Okay, so now you have to do the factoring.
So this would be x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1. Okay, then you have to do this one more time. So it be x squared plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1 over x minus 1. So right now you cannot substitute because this will make it equal to 0. But once you cancel it out, okay, then you can go and substitute. Now it's okay now. Now once you substitute, that's when you draw the limit. So you have to carry the limit all the way through until you substitute. Okay, so you're going to get 2 times 2 will give you 4. And that's it. Okay, let's go to number 17. You have f of x equal to 1 over square root of x at 4. Okay, so you can think of this as y. A function is uh, y is a function of x. So go and sketch out point one, point two, and you're looking for derivative means a slope. So this point would be uh, at at four. Sorry, this is at four. So make sure you copy the point correctly. Okay. So this is at four, and this would be x, the y over here y would be 1 over square root of x okay so you have to get your x2 y2 and then your x1 y1 now you don't know what y1 is so you have to put in the uh, in the function to get your y1 so y1 would be 1 over square root of 4 right so you put x1 in here to get y1 so y1 equal to 1 over 2 so this would be 1 over 2 so once you have this point now you can apply the, the uh, derivative uh, uh, limits the definition of the of the derivative using the limits. So you have f prime of four. You go to the limit. Okay, so you're going to get y two minus y one over x two minus uh, x one, and the limit would be x approach to four. Okay, so you have complex fraction. So for complex fraction, um, this one you, you can because there's a square root also. So uh, you know let's go and get rid of the complex fraction first. Let's go and multiply by common denominator. So common denominator would be 2 square root of x 2 square root of x and I'm going to multiply 2 square root of x okay so this will cancel out so a lot of writing so as soon as I cancel I'm going to write this over here this cancel out minus square root of x and this would be x minus 4 and 2 square root of x and now, when you have square root of x, what you need to do is, when you have this kind of situation, you need to multiply by conjugate. So go and multiply by 2 plus square root of x, 2 plus square root of x. So when you multiply the conjugate, you're going to get f and l. So, so this will give you 4 minus x. Okay. And on the bottom, you get x minus 4, 2 square root of x, and you get 2 plus square root of x. Now, notice over here, you got 4 minus x, and you got x minus 4. So, they are opposite of each other. So, when you cancel, you get negative 1. So, when you cancel, you get negative 1 over here. So, now you can go and substitute, because now when you substitute 4, you don't get a 0. So, you're okay. Okay, so once you substitute, you can drop the limit. So you got negative 1 over 2 square root of 4, 2 plus, uh, 2 plus, square
square root of 4. Okay. And you're going to simplify. So this, so square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. And square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So f prime of 4 equal to negative 1 over 16. Okay, let's go to number 19. Okay, so you got f of f of x equal to x squared plus 2x. And you're looking for f prime of a. Okay. So can you do the same thing? Remember this is your y, right? Okay, so you go through the same process, so this is point 1, this is point 2, and you're looking for the derivative of that. So this point, you're looking at A, so to find Y, you just substitute into here, right? So you're going to get A squared plus 2A, and this point would be X, X squared plus 2X, okay? Okay, so F prime of A equal to the limit. So it'd be y2 minus y1. Over x2 minus x1. And the and the limit would be again you, you're gonna this approach to that, so it'd be x approaches to a. Okay. Okay, so now it's a matter of um uh, simplifying things. Okay, so you're going to x square minus two x minus a squared minus 2a over x minus a and next so you need to do the factoring so there are four terms so you have to do the grouping for the factoring so I'm going to group this together So just a lot of algebra. So I'm gonna factor that so I get x plus a, x minus a. And this one I have to factor out the negative two. Okay, factor out the negative two. And notice I have x plus a, x plus a, so I'm gonna factor it out. So factor out x plus a, so I get x minus a, so again when I factor out x plus a, this is gone, so I get x minus a minus 2 over x minus a, uh, let me double check. Okay, double check. Make sure I copy it correctly. Mm. Okay, did something wrong. Yeah, over here, copy it wrong. This is plus. Um, so you have to be careful. Yeah, this is a plus. 
so we go back okay you know we have to redo this whole thing okay so scratch this let's go and redo this whole thing so that's why you got to copy the problem very carefully okay so it, the steps are correct it's just that this kind of mess everything up so just to avoid confusing I'm just going to do everything over okay so f prime of a we go to the name it x approach to a and we're going to have x squared plus 2x so that's the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay okay so let's go ahead and simplify so that's why you want to write out all your steps because if you try to do things in your head a little mistakes is going to mess things up okay so you're going to get x squared plus 2x minus a squared minus 2a over x minus a so do the grouping okay and then go into the factoring so you're going to get x plus a x minus a over here you factor out the 2 so you're going to get x minus a okay. now the reason I don't want to just kind of change the sign up here because it's going to be kind of messy and confusing so that's why I'm kind of do it over so it's more clear okay so now you have to factor out x minus a so factor out x minus a so you got x plus a plus 2 again that's how I know that's, that something is wrong because nothing cancel okay when there's nothing can cancel that means you means something is wrong so go back and check and sure enough the sun is wrong okay so you can notice like I say if there's something you're able to cancel out okay if it does not mean something is wrong now as, as soon as as soon as I cancel now I can substitute right? before, before I cannot before if I make x equal to a this will become zero so now it got canceled now I can substitute into here okay so I can I have a plus a plus 2 so f prime of a will equal to 2a plus 2 okay, okay let's go to 21 Okay, you have f of x equal to x over x plus 1 and you're looking for f prime of a so again this is y my right? function is y is a function of x okay so you can write this way if you want to you can make a sketch so point 1 is a and you put it, substitute a into here into the function the y would be a over a plus 1 over here you're going to get x and x over x plus 1 okay and again you're looking for the, the derivative of the slope okay so f prime of a equal to the limit of y2 minus y1 over x2 min minus x1 and the name it would be x approach to a okay so I'm gonna write it one more time so it's not as confusing because I don't want to keep writing the same thing over the same line it's sometimes it's harder to see so I got x over x plus 1 minus a over a plus 1 over x minus a 
So this is a complex fraction. So complex fraction, I'm going to multiply everything by the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 1, a plus 1, x plus 1, a plus 1, x plus 1, a plus 1. Okay, so this way cancel out. And I'm going to multiply out. So I get ax plus x. And this one cancel out. Now be careful, there's a minus a times that, right? It'll be minus ax. So negative a times x is negative ax. Negative a times 1 would be minus a. And do not multiply the bottom, okay? Keep the bottom, leave the bottom alone. And from here, this way cancel out. So I get x minus a over x minus a, I got x plus 1, a plus 1. Again, when you do it correctly, something should cancel, right? So this one can cancel. And now we can go and substitute. Before you cannot, because before when you x equal to a, this will become 0, right? So you can substitute. So you're going to get a plus 1, a plus 1. So f prime of a equal to 1 over a plus 1 squared.